Good morning, and welcome to Port Norris Baptist Church Adult Sunday School class. My name is Ken Wilford. I'm the teacher here, and today we're continuing a series of lessons on what the truths every Christian needs to know. Okay, the truths every Christian needs to know. You know, it's basically um, Christianity 101, but it's a good refresher for our people that have been saved a long time, church members for a long time. New people, why do we believe what we believe? Maybe you're coming just on YouTube to watch this and you don't really have a good church background. I mean, this would be great for you as well. That's what we're going to do this morning. Okay, So uh, we're going to continue that lesson. Let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us be able to look into your word today. Pray just take one thing we learn today, use it in our hearts and lives. Pray for all those around the world that are suffering with this virus at this time, that you would just bless them and just uh, draw them to yourself. Lord, send revival in our land. Just be with those that are sick, raise them up, and just be with those that are at home and worried and afraid that they would put their uh, trust in you. And now just guide and direct in all these things. Help us have a great lesson today. We ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we've been going through uh, these different series of lessons. Last week we talked about God hears and answers prayer. So if you want to check out that lesson, you can you know, look that up. It's in our YouTube library from last week. This week we're going to talk about what the Bible teaches about the New Testament church. What the Bible teaches about the New Testament church. You know, this is something that has always been a topic down through the ages. Um, what is the church actually all about? What is, you know, back in the beginning they uh, used to call it that way. Okay, that way, because the Jewish <coughs> hierarchy, they didn't want to acknowledge Christ as the Messiah. Uh, the Jewish people on the whole still do not acknowledge him as Messiah. Uh, and so therefore they have rejected him uh, pretty much. And then there are some, of course, Jewish people that believe, which is great. We'd love to have them all believe. That would be amazing. One day, the Bible says that is going to happen. But for now, uh, we have the, ter the church... Okay, we're living in the church age, um, and we are uh, dealing with the New Testament church. Now, <clears throat> you know what we think about things, our philosophy needs to be based on our theology. Okay, our philosophy needs to be based on our theology, and that's what, uh, in our church, that's what we base our philosophy on. Okay, so that's why our church is 135 years old. Not much has changed from the, from the beginning. As far as what we believe, as far as you know, the different tenets of our faith and that kind of thing, it doesn't change. Okay, we don't have to have a meeting every year and discuss it and talk about it and vote on it. Okay, or pray about it because why? Because it's not based on anything that's changing. It's based on the Word of God, and the Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We still use the King James Bible at our church. Because we believe that, hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay, and so, um, you know, that is what every church should do. Okay, I, I'm just being honest with you. It's not just, well, this is what we like, you know, this is our, you know, this is like our pet peeves and our pros and cons. No. Okay, this is what the Bible says about a New Testament church. Jesus says, I will build my church. Okay, I will build my church. The word church is a very significant because it is never used to describe a denomination. Okay, there is no denominations in the scriptures. Okay, there is no denominations in the scriptures. It's never used to describe a group of churches. Okay, it's never used to describe a national church. Okay, again, unbiblical concept. Okay, unscriptural concept. National church. You say what? Ken, you don't want. America to declare the Baptist Church to be, you know, the only church for the United States of America? Wouldn't that be amazing? No, that would be a complete nightmare. <laughs> okay, that would be a complete and utter nightmare. Okay, how do I know that? History. The Bible, number one, tells me. Okay, but number two, history tells me. Okay, if you look in the Reformation period, see the things that happened during that time where basically people... Tried that idea. Hey, let's take this denomination, make it 
the national denomination of Germany or this place or that place. And it quickly devolves into a nightmare. All right, so we don't want that. Uh, and that the church is never used in that context in the scriptures. Okay, that is a man-made stuff and thing. So when someone asks, "What is the church?" Okay, we give a very simple definition. The local church is a group of baptized believers who have voluntarily joined themselves together to carry out the Great Commission. Okay, so there you go. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. The Bible says, uh, Jesus is talking here to his disciples. as who, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They started answering, some say thou art John the Baptist. Okay, so when they heard Jesus preaching, he preached, you know, loudly. And they said, oh, that's just like John the Baptist. Okay, he was... A mighty preacher with authority. Said so some say Elias. Okay, why? Because Elijah did a lot of miracles. Okay, Elijah did a lot of miracles. Actually, Elisha did even more miracles, twice as much. But they said, you know, this guy, Jesus, he's like Elijah. He's doing all these miracles. Some say Jeremiah. Right? Why Jeremiah? Well, Jesus wept. Okay, Jesus wept. Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. Okay, Jesus had wept over people. He had wept over his nation, the nation of the Jews. Um, and they said, he's just like Jeremiah. Okay, but Jesus said, whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter stepped forward and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, and the Lord took that statement and said in verse 18, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, so his church is his called out assembly. Jesus said, I will build my church. Okay, He did not say, I will build your church. Okay, Sometimes we talk about church or our church. You know, We get a little possessive. We say, oh, Lord, bless our church. Lord, help our church to grow. Help this, help this. It's not our church. It's his church. Okay, So I understand we like, you know, we want it to be ours, and it is. Okay, But mainly it's his. Okay, it's his church. And so he said, I'm not going to build your church. Okay, He says, he didn't say, you will, you will build my church. No. Okay, He didn't say that to the disciples. All right, guys, put your heads together, brainstorm. We need a marketing plan to get this done. Let's see, what can we do? Okay, No, he didn't say that. He said, I will build my church. Okay, So the church is not the latest, you know, gizmo to cut french fries better and faster okay it is not you know the latest uh thing to put on your car to get extra miles per gallon okay it's not something that you buy on the qvc network and you buy one in the next 15 minutes and you get you know a free keychain or something no <laughs> okay and we shouldn't try to make it that way we shouldn't you know use modern day marketing techniques and pressures and all these other things to build the church because that's not our responsibility. Okay, Our responsibility is to go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, live a good life, live a, the life that we need to live in front of people as a testimony, as a witness. And Jesus said, I will build my church. Okay? In other words, that's his responsibility is to see people get saved, see people come into the church. Okay? Uh, and he said he's going to do that. Okay. Sometimes we don't really trust him to do that. <laughs> now, I have to do, you know, uh, come on, I can do it, Lord. But that's not our job. Okay, stick with your job. Okay. Um, so let's keep going here. The New Testament church started with Christ and his disciples and was empowered at Pentecost. Okay. Now, wow, that sounds like such an easy thing to say, and yet I'll probably get phone calls about this. I'll probably get uh, hate mail about this. I have no clue why. People get very upset about when did the church start? When did the church start? When, when, when? And I think it started and I think it started there. Okay? I mean, that's fine. Uh, the, the reality is a lot of you know people like that you would respect as the old theologians down through the years have disagreed on this topic. Okay? I don't know why people get so crazy on this topic, but, you know, Christ and his disciples, he started the church with them, ok, 
Okay? He breathed on them. He said, receive the Holy Ghost. They didn't get it right then. They got it at Pentecost. Okay? They were empowered at Pentecost. And that's the church. Okay? That's the church. That's who the church started with. The original 11 disciples and Jesus. And it got empowered at Pentecost. Okay? Uh, and then the church is also a local church. Okay? It's a local church. Uh, it's a group of local believers. I'm, I keep saying the word local. 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 All right. Why do you keep saying that? That's so weird. All right, let's keep going. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18. Okay, the Lord's talking here to his disciples again. He says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But he, if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen and as a pulp and a heathen man and a publican. Sorry about that. So, you're having a problem between your, you and your brother, or your brother is sinning against you, or your brother is just sinning straight up against everyone and the Lord and everything. Um, there's a mechanism in place where you that is to be dealt with. Okay, it's to be dealt with in a private manner at first. Then, if he won't deal with it, you have to bring him before the church, and you have to deal with it in a public way. This is what the Lord has commanded. All right. So if you don't like it, you got to take it up with him. All right. So explain to me how you're going to do this when you live in one town and your pastor lives in a whole other city and town. Because you're doing your church, quote unquote, is on the internet. Please explain to me right now how this is going to happen. You're going to call him on the phone, tell him about the situation. You're going to do some kind of a Skype call or something. I have no clue. Okay, uh, it isn't going to work. Okay, uh, so if you think about the churches that way, as people that are just all over the world, disconnected by by uh, space and area and all you know somehow believing the same thing some kind of invisible universal church thing okay again that doesn't work because there's no church to take people to to confront them about their sin and problems the only way this scenario that Jesus is talking about here works is if you have a local body of believers where you have a pastor and you have all that stuff we'll talk about that in a minute Okay, and then if you have this issue and everybody's, you know, kind of keeping each other um, accountable for their actions and things, which is part of why this was set up in the first place, okay? Um, and, you know, you can help each other, you can love each other, sometimes you have to, you know, talk about these issues, whatever you need to do, there's people right near you where you can do that, and it's not a big deal, okay? So that is what a New Testament church is. Okay? It's not you getting up in the morning and watching somebody on TV and sending them ten bucks okay, every month. No. And it's not excuse me, it's not you mailing in money to a church every month and never going through the door and saying I'm a member. Or you got baptized there five, 50 years ago, 500 years ago, 50 years ago but you haven't been there in 25 years but you still send them a check. Okay? No. Okay. If you want to do that, that's great. But being a member, you have to be part of a local body of believers. Okay. Uh, right now, we're in this crisis. We cannot meet together because it's going to put members in danger health-wise. That's o the only reason we're doing this. If it wasn't for that, we would be meeting every week. We all want to do that. And as soon as this is over, we will do it. Spoiler alert. We will do it. Okay, uh, so this does not take the place of actually going to church. This is just a something we can do right now because of technology to deal with the situation and not and there's, it's better than nothing. But if this is all that we had, this is not enough. Okay, because you just don't and even during this time, our church is take keeping track of our members, calling each other on the phone. Asking people if they need help, if they need this, if they need that. We're not just ignoring each other and then coming together to watch stuff on TV every week. Okay, 
That is not church. Okay, just FYI. And it's not in the scriptures. So if you can tell me how you're going to do this uh, church discipline thing without actually having an actual church group that's local to you, please tell me. I want to know. Yeah, I'm sure you have some creative way of doing it. It would just blow my mind. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get off of that. Let's keep going. So we see the New, Ch the New Testament church is a group of local believers. The New Testament church has a saved and baptized membership. Okay, so this is another thing. Go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. It says, And they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and breaking of bread, and in prayers. Okay, so these people that accepted the Lord as their personal Savior... Then they obeyed the Lord in believers' baptism, and then they joined the local church. Okay, in Acts nine twenty six, it talks about Paul joining himself unto the church. These people were joining the local church. Okay, so in order to be part of a local church, you need to be saved. Number one, trust Christ as your personal Savior. Number two, be scripturally baptized. And then join the church. That's pretty easy, right? I mean, that's what people get hung up on that. Okay? Uh, they get hung up on that. And that's not good. Okay? We shouldn't be hung up on that. The Lord gave us that as how we're supposed to be, uh, what we're supposed to do. Okay? So a good, it's great to be saved. Okay? Then you need to be scripturally baptized. Okay? Then you need to join the local church and to carry out the Great Commission. Because that is the avenue that the Lord has given us to do that. Okay? All this technology things is great. I enjoy you know, being able to do this because when I record this on here, this is going to be on here forever. And maybe a hundred years from now, my great, 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 great grandchild is going to watch this and get saved. I have no idea. That would be amazing. Okay? Maybe not. Maybe it'll all get burned and we'll, we'll all be back in the Stone Age in ten years. Who knows? But, <laughs> but you know, you never know. But this has not replaced the local church. Okay? God has, Jesus gave us that as the way to get the Great Commission done. Okay? Uh, we're supposed to support the local church by being there, attendance, our prayers, our finances. Okay? And then work, you know, doing work there. That is how it works. Okay, when I was at Tennessee Temple, Dr. Lee Robertson was very stressed local church. Okay, local church, and I feel the same way. Okay, if you uh, are doing a ministry, like there's certain colleges out there. I'm not going to say the name. They know who I'm talking about. They were not started by a local church. They were started by some rich people decided that they wanted to do something cool. So they started a Bible college, okay? I'm not, you know, that's fine. Except the fact that it's not local church based. They have their own church inside the school itself. And they've had lots and lots of problems and issues, partially because of this wealthy family who just keeps meddling in things all the time. That's why you don't do that. Okay. Uh, instead, it's you do it through the local church. A local church gets a vision from God. I want to start a Bible college. They start a Bible college, and they're kind of the oversight of it, and that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, Crown College is like that. Okay, uh, Tennessee Temple was like that. It is now it does not exist anymore. Okay, but let's keep going. So if you do it the opposite way, the cart before the horse way then, you know, just expect things to not turn out in the end. But, anyway, let's keep going. Matthew chapter 25, verses 19 through 20. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Okay, so, uh, again, baptism. So, salvation first, baptism second. Baptism we have to do through immersion. That's what the word means. Okay, uh, I, I've teased our class before that, you know, it would be weird for it to be Port Norris immerse, Immersion Church or something like that. 
but that's what baptism actually means. It doesn't have mean sprinkling at all. It means you're going under the water all the way and coming back up. And, you know, we could talk about that for a long time. The other thing I believe that you need to be baptized by an ordained pastor. Now you say, ordained? Why you say that? Uh, because in the scriptures they always ordained the, the pastors in every church, right? In the book of Acts. When Paul went out starting these different churches, said he ordained elders, you know, which is another name for a pastor, in the churches, and those pastors ordained pastors, and those pastors ordained pastors, and now we're down to today. Okay, so our pastors we have today that are ordained by other pastors, a group of other pastors, it's a line that goes all the way back to the disciples. Okay, so that's why it's important, I feel like, to be baptized by an ordained pastor. I mean, if you didn't have to do that, then anybody could get baptized at any moment. Like, you go to the Jordan River in Israel, and there's a, you know, park ranger or something there, and you say, hey, park ranger dude, dunk me under the water real quick and bring me back up. Oh, I was baptized in the Jordan River. No. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. No. Uh, I believe you have to be baptized, immersed, and also by an ordained minister. Again, if you don't believe that, show me the scriptures that tells otherwise. Okay, uh, there is no scriptures for sprinkling in the in the Bible. Sorry, and the ordaining thing, I'm pretty solid on that myself. Let's keep going. The New Testament Church has Christ as the only head. Colossians 1:18, and He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have preeminence. Okay, so an independent Baptist, independent, fundamental, temperamental, probably mental, uh, Baptist church, <laughs> independent, okay, Baptist church, we don't have a headquarters, okay, we don't have a headquarters, and we don't have a president, we just have our church, and that's the way all the independent Baptist churches are, uh, our headquarters is in heaven, and our leader is Jesus Christ. Okay, or they, oh, that's just, you're just being so sanctimonious. Your headquarters are heaven, and your, your leader is Jesus Christ. Well, you know, that is what it is. Um, and like I said, we don't have yearly meetings where we all get together and discuss what we're going to believe this year, what we're going to not believe this year, and who we can who can be a preacher this year and who can't be a preacher this year. And if the Bible is right on this issue, or if it's not right on this issue, and all that kind of stuff. Nope. Okay. Uh, instead, we have one headquarters heaven and one leader, the Lord Jesus Christ. And one thing of doctrine, which is the Bible. Okay, the Bible. And so, you know, that is our book. That is our book. That is our rule book. Is the scriptures. And so, I'm going to go over there an acrostic that tells what Baptists believe just by spelling out the word Baptists. And you can enjoy it. Okay, you ready? B stands for Biblical Authority. Translation, we just do what the Bible says. A stands for Autonomy of the Local Church. In other words, we're independent. P stands for Priesthood of the Believers. That means that you can just pray to the Lord directly. You don't have to talk to me or the pastor or anybody. Just pray to God. That's what the scriptures tell. T stands for Two Church Officers, Pastor and Deacon. That's it. Okay. When you see in the Bible, uh, Pastor, Elders, Bishop, it's all the same thing. Okay. Just different names for the same thing. Deacon. Okay. That's the two offices. I stands for individual soul liberty. That means that everybody has to make their own choice of what they're going to believe and what they're not going to believe. And that is very important. Okay, Again, this is Baptists have always believed this. We have taken, taken a lot of heat for this over the years, especially when another group tries to come in and, be, and make a national religion or a state-run religion. Nope, we don't like that. Okay. So I would not go to a Muslim country with a gun, point it at the people and say, give up Muhammad, believe Jesus, or I'm going to shoot you. No. 
okay? Like, but those people, they are mean. Like, no, stop. We don't do that. If it doesn't come from them, if it's not something that they're, they want to trust Christ as, on their own, it's not worth anything anyway. So why do it? S, okay, stands for Save Church Membership. T stands for Two Church Ordinances, Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Again, how are we going to do the Lord's Supper unless we're meeting together? That's like the whole point of that. But we can't do it through TV. Mm, here's some bread. Mm, ooh, delicious. And here's some grape juice. Mm, blah, 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 blah. Oh, my camera's burnt. No. All right, I'm being silly today. I'll keep going. S stands for separation of church and state, which to me is, I kind of covers that. They put a little, an extra S on the end, Baptists. I mean, soul liberty, separation of church and state is basically the exact same thing. The state has no business telling people what they should believe or what they shouldn't believe. And they need to get stay out of the church's business. And our founding uh, fathers believe that. Okay, and reluctantly, the Baptists stood up to them and said, Listen, we fought, we helped you in the revolution, now you help us by putting this in the Constitution. And they reluctantly did it. Okay, so it was not just a slam dunk. And it was because Baptists stood up for it. Separation of church and state. Okay. All right, our faith was once delivered and must be contended for in every generation. Jude chapter 3, or says, maybe it's just Jude verse 3, I think. Beloved, when I, it's Jude verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Okay, so, um, Jude says, hey, I was going to talk to you about the common salvation, and part of doing that is to tell you to earnestly contend for the faith. In other words, Keep believing what you've been given to believe from day one. Keep doing it. Okay, keep doing it. And that's what a good church is going to do. A good church is not going to constantly change what they believe by the whims of society or vote voting things up and down as far as doctrine and as far as beliefs of the church. No. And I would be very hesitant to even change what you do in your church quickly. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Uh, if you can possibly avoid it. For all right, so then it says the New Testament church is the pillar and ground of the truth. First Timothy three fifteen through sixteen. First Timothy three fifteen through sixteen. But if I tarry long, you may know how to, thou oughtest behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Okay, so the, the church, one of their jobs of the church is to be the pillar and ground of the truth. In other words, we're supposed to be a foundation okay, in society uh, of truth. So that when society is looking around for truth, they will see it in the church. Okay. Sadly, that's not what's happening today. We've traded truth for tolerance. Okay. And you know we should love others. We should be respectful of others. But that doesn't mean that we tell everybody that they're fine and pat them on the back every ten minutes. Because that's not actually being somebody's friend sometimes. Sometimes being somebody's friend is saying, hey, that's bad, you need to stop. Okay, sorry, but that's... I'm not sorry. Sorry, but I'm not sorry. Okay? Instead, I would rather be, you know, be a pillar and ground of the truth. And so we need to understand that. That that's part of the church's job. The New Testament church is to be an independent congregation. Go back to Acts 13. Verses 1 through 4. Acts 13, verses 1 through 4. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Okay, so the people of the church sent them out. 
The Word of God says the Holy Ghost sent them out. Who sent them out? Both. Okay, both. Uh, the Holy Ghost, okay, the church recognized the Spirit of God at work. And they did this. So this wasn't, you know, all the churches in the entire world sending out Paul and Barnabas. It was the church at Antioch doing it. Okay. Uh, and so they were independent. Also, the New Testament church is responsible to evangelize the world. Acts 1.8. Acts 1 8, it says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Okay, so this is part of the Great Commission. We are having that responsibility. There's a difference between a vision and ambition. Okay, ambition is saying, I want this, I'm going to set these goals, I'm going to make it happen. Okay. And some people are very successful at that. Okay, very successful at that. A vision is God gives you a vision of what could be, and He is giving you that direction to go in that direction, and you do it through His power. That's having a vision. That's what we need. Okay, ambition is for the workplace. Okay, ambition is for the workplace. Ambition is good. It's in the right place. It's in the workplace, and you're making money, or you're, you know, trying to make your company better, your business better, that's great to have ambition. Or you want to better yourself and learn things, great. But in the Christian world, we need a vision. Okay, We need to ask God for a vision. And then the last thing we're going to see here is the New Testament church is pastor-led. Pastor-led. Okay, Sheep need a shepherd. The Lord has designed the local church to be led by a shepherd which is their pastor. 1 Timothy 3 1, it says, This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. Okay, so we see bishop, elder, and shepherd, and pastor is all the same exact thing. Um, one who can see and oversee. That's what a bishop means. Okay, one who can see and oversee. Um, and again, this is all part of being part of a local church. How would you have a pastor if they're not able to see and oversee? Okay. In other words, if I was a shepherd and you had a flock of sheep, but you lived 20 miles away, and you said, hey, I'm going to hire you to watch them for me. And you're like, okay, I can do that from here. I'll look, see, I can see them sheep from over here. I got some uh, binoculars and stuff. I can see them. They're way over there, but I can see them. No. Why? Because you can't really interact with them. You can't really oversee them. Okay, that's why this whole remote control church thing or remote, you know, I'm here in this state and my pastor's in a whole other state, but that's my pastor, that's my church on television, does not work. Okay, it's not biblical, it's not scriptural. Now, there's people that are sick, they cannot get out. Right now, we're sick, we're not, or people are getting sick, we're not supposed to get out. That is a special occasion. If that person is able to, they should have a local church that they belong to. Because now, they're doing what God tells us to do. Okay? I mean, I'm not even telling you to come to Port Orange Baptist Church, because some of you folks might live in other states far away. But there should be a church within 30 mile radius of your house, okay, that is scriptural, that loves the Lord, that's trying their best to do the Great Commission. They're not going to be perfect! So if you're looking for that perfect one, okay, I think that's why a lot of people go to the online church because now they don't have to deal with anyone else. They don't have to deal with all the, the other fallible humans. Okay, The pastor is a fallible human being. The other members, they don't want to deal with that, so they just want to be online, and they think somehow they're perfect, or they think if they don't have to interact with all these people, it's better somehow. No. Okay? We're not doing what God told us to do, which is be a part of a local church body of believers. Again, a body. Okay, If I took my arm and chopped it off and mailed it to Canada, is that still part of my body? No, it's not. <laughs> okay? Uh, and so, you know, being disconnected from each other is not a body. Okay? Being connected together by meeting together as much as we can by encouraging each other, by looking at, watching over each other. You know, that's part of being a real church. And so that's my encouragement for you folks today. I know right now I might seem like I'm being hypocritical because I'm on YouTube 
coming to you this way. But this is a special use here going on. This is not the way things should be. Everybody knows that. But if this is your normal life, you say, hey, I haven't been in church in years because it's just so annoying. I have to drive places, and then there's people there, and they, you know, bump against me or something. Uh, so what? <laughs> is it all about you? Is it all about your inconvenience or your own, you know, ego? If it is, then that's not the right motive either, okay? It should all be about him. What does he say about it? Well... He says, I want you to be a part of a local body of believers that has a pastor, that has deacons, that is preaching the word of God, that has baptism by immersion, that is independent, doesn't have a denomination, uh, and all that stuff. That's what he says in his word. Okay, If you don't believe me, you look it up this week, and you'll find out for yourself. So that's my encouragement to you folks today. I know this is something our folks know all about. Uh, but maybe it's new to you. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and then when you subscribe, click the little bell next to it so you can get notifications every time we upload a new video. And we will see you, Lord willing, next Sunday morning.